You failed. Now what? You didn't think it was possible. I mean, you tried so hard. Everything was against you, but you dug in your nails, gave it everything, and you failed. The agent said no, gave you great feedback on your manuscript, and totally let you down so gently it didn't seem like a no. The answer was no. You got a D in the class, mucked up the final, or missed too much work, or something. You came in third. In the race, or the talent show, or the beauty contest, you you failed. Yeah, man. Happened to you. You weren't good enough, or strong enough, or fast enough. Okay, you're mortal. It had to happen sometime. The question is, what now? Two choices. Give up, or don't give up. Giving up is easy. Chuck it, you know, delete your novel from your hard drive, toss it in the waste paper basket, destroy it like Stevenson did with the first draft of Jekyll and Hyde. Walk away, quit the running club, donate your bikini glue to Goodwill, and grow a unibrow, whatever. That's a quitter's word, whatever. But go ahead, quit if you want to. Otherwise, don't quit. As for not quitting... There are probably functional and dysfunctional ways to persevere. On the dysfunctional side, you'll find stalking, endlessly appealing, seceding from the union. At some point, your irrepressible spirit and persistence turn from romantic to threatening, from passionate to creepy, from wholehearted to obsessive to possibly racist and treasonous. She said no. She said no but you can't get her off your mind. The interview went well, but they went with another candidate, and you keep calling and calling, walking past the door, trying to catch a glimpse of somebody, the sight of her face, her new lover, the candidate they chose, who can't be better than you. You have a sickness, an illness. Same-sex marriage is the law of the land. Voting rights for people of color are the law of the land. Some people never give up. One municipality stopped issuing marriage licenses at all to prevent having to comply with the law. People quit their clerk positions and other offices to prevent having to comply with the law. States nibble endlessly around the edges of the voting rights act. Persistence isn't always a good thing. Sometimes you're on the wrong side. Then there are people who finish marathons on broken legs. Can this possibly be good for you? Isn't one sacrificing their long-term viability in order to, to complete this one single race at this one single instant of time? I'm all for life in the moment, and yes, this yet this doesn't seem like wisdom. Students do this to me sometimes. Debate every possible point in the course. Tell me the stakes, what they have writing on the grade, all the hardships they've endured. And it all tears me up inside, sure, because I care. I care about you. In the end, though, a D is not a C, and there's only so much I can do, particularly after the fact. In the end, you have to turn and face this failure. Persistence notwithstanding, due diligence to persistence, then let it go. Because at some point you're the creationist still trying to argue the basic facts of existence against long-established facts. No, dinosaur bones are not misinterpretations by scientists who hate the Bible. No, people didn't evolve from chimps, but from a no longer extant common ancestor. No, 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 no more appeals. So what about functional persistence? At some point, you have to give up the appeals. She doesn't like you. If you really like her beyond wanting to possess her, then live with it. Let it go. So they hired someone else. That really is personal, and it's okay. You can go sour grapes on it if you want to, but the truth is, 
you really might have been happy there. You might have gotten along. But they had to make a decision. They made one. Your novel still lives in your desk drawer. You don't get a tiara. So you failed today. Are you therefore a failure? That is the question. Of course, failure affects you because you're a human being. It affects you. But because you're a human and not, say, a goldfish, you get to choose exactly how to be affected by experiences. You can choose to learn from your failures. Did you make mistakes? Did you over-enroll or miss a step or under-prepare? You can choose to reevaluate your goals. Are you ready for that full-time professorship? Or maybe should you begin with some adjunct work? Are you ready for a book deal? Or do you need to spend some time contemplating how to introduce dramatic tension into your stories? Do you objectively have a horrifying unibrow that no amount of plucking and foundation can conceal? Set smaller goals, attain them, and keep edging ever closer to the ultimate goal and wonder wonder whether you should try again. Were you so close that you could make it? Was circumstance the only thing in the way? Because delays are expensive and disheartening, but strictly temporary. In the end, I suggest reflection. Maybe you got into this in the first place because you don't have time for reflection, in which case, what's the point? You know, make time or find it in the shower, on the john, while you pull your big girl pants on one leg at a time. You failed. You're a mortal being prone to failure, made of meat, of edible flesh. Sometimes people won't like you. Sometimes you will take on more work than you can accomplish. Sometimes you will swim out beyond your ability to swim back. As you fail, lose, underperform, are ruled against. The world keeps turning right along. The stars wheel overhead in stately, uncaring majesty, and grass grows neatly over the patch of ground you'll eventually be buried under. Your failures are costly. Time, energy, money, maybe more. They aren't always opportunities, either. There isn't a god opening and closing doors to direct you to where you're supposed to be. Risk doesn't always lead inexorably to reward, hard work unerringly to success. Humility is good for us. Ultimately, people who are able to reflect on their experiences and make active decisions based on those reflections are the ones who are happy by age 65. You're disappointed because you care. And that's good. That's information. That's why you throw up your hands and use that quitter's word, whatever, to pretend you don't care, to solve wounded feelings. The trick is to be humble, to have humility without being humiliated. So stop. Think, reflect, meditate, cogitate, even ruminate until you're done. I'd stop short of perseverating, but do that too if you need to. Then when you're ready, get up, stand up, brush the proverbial dirt off your backside, make a decision, and enact it.